racing in its purest form. Real cars on real roads. Real fast. It's the Subaru Canadian Rally Championship on TSN. And round four of this year's championship, the Rocky Mountain Rally from Calgary, Alberta. We welcome you to Calgary, the Eau Claire Festival Market downtown. Vic Rutter along with Paul Chater. And Vic, we've got 30 cars ready for the rally, the most ever for the Rocky Mountain. The official start downtown gives the fans a chance to see the cars and talk to their favorite drivers before they head out to the Porcupine Hills tomorrow morning. Now for the end of May, the weather is terrific in Calgary, but there are some concerns about weather in the mountains. Unfortunately, because of our good results, uh, we were first on the road, and being first on the road in the conditions we've had, we've had snow, there's some mud, we might be clearing off the snow and laying down some good tracks for the other guys. So, uh, but you know, there's only one reseed and it's halfway through the event, so I'm going to have to push hard anyway and uh, make the best of it. There's the old adage about to weather in Calgary, what's it like? Wait a minute, and look at this. Porcupine Hills, two days before the rally. The rally stewards, Ross Wood and John Belfler, had a tough time opening the roads, to say the least. Well, the night before, about two feet here, of Chloe? snow fell on the area. The biggest problem was knowing where the road went, so a great part of the day was spent digging their vehicle. And up. this is the same area, Paul, 40 hours later. Temperatures have risen dramatically. First car on the road will be the Subaru WRX of last week's winner, Patrick Richard, Ian McCurdy. They're from Whistler. Doesn't look like May, does it? Unbelievable changes from less than two days ago. And you can see that on this part of the stage, it's mostly mud, but as they climb up the hill, the conditions change to snow and some ice. Think snow, eh? Just think snow driving. And even though it's muddy, you can hear Ian saying, you know, drive as if it was snow. And you can see how the conditions have changed in the space of only two kilometers. Now Pat has to deal with the snow, and he's the first car on the road, so he ends up cleaning the road for the other competitors. We're plowing with the bumper here. <laughs> and he's here, he's plowing with the bumper. He's really running in ruts, and that's not the correct racing line through, the, through any of these turns. But as you would expect, Pat Richard goes only one way to do a rally, and that's to be aggressive. But he's got to be careful. This snow is very wet, very heavy, and you don't want to go off the road into it. Something else. You have to worry about wildlife. Looks good here. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, dear. Oh. Literally. <laughs> Almost hitting Bambi, who's probably wondering what's looks going good. on with all this. And it was close. Now, you can't let that kind of stuff cool with you mentally, can you? No, it can really mess up your concentration. Pat having a great season, two wins. Pierce Nash, the big horn, he leads the championship. You got it, man, you got it. You're yeah, on. you got it, but he still has to be careful, especially when the ch with the changes in conditions, you never know what's around the next corner. Look at this, right in the mud. Second on the road, the other Subaru Canada WRX of the Painter Brothers from Nova Scotia. And uh, look, they're trying to find some traction on that hairpin, too. This is only their second rally this season. They won the Production 4 class in 2001. They managed a fifth overall last week at the Bighorn. In these conditions, it doesn't take too much to go off the road, however. And that snow is so heavy that you, you can't always rely on the power to get your way back out of it. We'll get back to them later. Yeah, you can see the stuff clock has started for them. The car, the number four Mitsubishi Evo. Of the Erickson brothers, Sylvan and Philippe from Gatineau. This was last night in Calgary. They ran a spectator stage at the Blackfoot Motorsport Park before heading to the foothills this morning, and the boys from Gatineau won both runs, so they start today with a lead of six seconds over the painters. And this morning, starting fourth on the road is a bit of an advantage because the other cars will have cleared some of the mud and snow out of the way. Now they can put some pressure on Pat Richard. <laughs> Doesn't matter, French or English, it's a wild ride. Last week, he was second to Pat Richard. Yeah, the slippery conditions they seem to like, and they've got narrow Yokohama mud tires on it, which seem to be the right choice at the moment. And this also is not a pace note event, so the drivers did not have a chance to look at the stages before. Now, this rally runs in the foothills of the Rockies, about 100 kilometers southwest of Calgary. The, the stages on five roads, used in different combinations, different directions, so by the end of it all, 
the drivers and teams, they know these roads pretty well. Yeah, but the problem is every time they use a road, the conditions change. Coming up to that triangle where the Painter brothers went off the road, and you can see they are still trying to dig themselves out. They've lost nearly two minutes to the leaders, and let's hope they get out soon. Erickson's great start won all three stages so far. Now watch this last night from Andrew Comrie Picard. Ooh, that hurt. He landed his Mitsubishi on the nose, bending the entire car. Now the team had to straighten it out, get this, by pulling it between two SUVs so he could start this morning. It's not exactly precision frame straightening, but it seems to be working, and Andrew reports the car is handling fine. And with Dave Schindel in the co-driver's seat, Comrie Picard is on a streak of two third-place finishes, Pierce Nege and Big Horn. And this car is maintained by Four Star Racing, so if anybody can fix a car, Frank Sprongle can. And Andrew is a smooth driver, but in these conditions, anything can happen. And Comrie Picard now coming up to where the painters are still trying to get out of that snowbank five minutes in. You see their warning triangle just back there? Now, look at this. Is this good sportsmanship or what? Comrie Picard is stopping to give the painters a pull out of the deep snow and get them on their way. There's the stop clock, five and a half minutes, and they're out. Another Subaru WRX, this is a private group and entry of Peter Thompson from Toronto and Rod Hendrickson from Clinton, New Jersey. Joel Levac, Eric Bourbonnet from Quebec in a P4 in Preza, seventh last week at the Bighorn. Gordon Cathy Olson from Brooks, Alberta, local favorites and 2001 Group 2 Canadian champions. They're flying in the front wheel drive golf, fourth overall. So here's the leaderboard. Surprise, surprise. It's the Ericsons who are leading. Rally on TSN is brought to you in part by Yokohama Performance Radio. Yokohama, now you've got control. And by Subaru, the beauty of all wheel drive. Welcome back to the Rocky Mountain Rally. Vic Rauter along with Paul Chater. Through six stages, the teams have stopped for service. And the championship leader, Pat Richard. I took it pretty easy the first time around. We were plowing a lot of snow. And uh, it looks like I went a little too slow. Sylvain was able to put up about uh, 30 seconds on us in the first pass. So the second time around, I sort of picked up the pace. And I think we were sort of almost matching times. But he's got a pretty good lead. And uh, thought we were going to do some snow, some more snow-covered roads this afternoon, but it looks like they've canceled that, so we're back to the mud. So, uh, you know, being first on the road uh, is not going to be much of a hindrance to him this afternoon. Team Subaru is staying on Yokohama snow tires, while Ericsson's group prefers an open-tread Yokohama mud tire. So here we are on stage seven. That's Ericsson on top of the screen. Pat Richard Subaru is on the bottom. And as you can see already, Richard has a pretty good lead. Yeah, he's got a very good lead at this point. And 200. Now remember the difference in tire choice. He's running on snow tires. This looks like basically mud, but he's pulling away. And at the split, the Subaru leads by 3.1 seconds. 300 downhill hairpin left. And he's stretching it out even farther now. In 100. Coming up to the second split. And it is now stretched to four seconds. So Richard continues to eat into Erickson's lead. 150 downhill hairpin right. 50. But Richard comes into a right handle. Right-hander here runs a little wide at the next. Gets out on the ice and sees his entire lead disappear. These two championship rivals would tie stage seven. Sylvain driving beautifully, matching the pace of his competitors and going just fast enough to beat them. It's a dominating performance. Does it come down to the tire choice strictly? The fact that he's, Erickson has selected the mud tires as compared to the winters taken by Richard? Yeah, it really does. I mean, both, uh, it, it makes sense when, when you hear both arguments. I mean, 
Uh, for Erickson, we can see the roads here, pretty muddy. He's using a thin tire with an open tread pattern, getting better grip on these slippery conditions. On the other hand, Pat Richard sees the snow all around and figures that he can use more of the road if he, if he can uh, get out into the snow on the edge and have the tires that will pull him through it. But that's what got him into trouble uh, before when he ran a little wide. He got out into the snow and it, it just bogged him right down because it's so wet, so heavy. Great example right there. Just see how thin those mud tires are. Kick it, kick it, kick it. Uh-oh, trouble now for Richard and McCurdy in the number one Subaru. Yeah, kick it, kick it. Patrick Richard's group in Impreza kick it, kick it. is actually being developed as the season progresses kick and more hard. homologated parts become available. They're trying a new engine management system. Okay, that's, a, a that's a computer that controls all engine escape. functions, and at the moment, it's yeah. malfunctioning. Maybe the altitude or possibly a fault with the software, but when Ian McCurdy bangs it with his hand, it starts for a little while, but their only hope is to make repairs in service. Ooh, and that smoke can't be anything good either. Look at that. Now, let's look at another battle here. Subaru Mitsubishi. On top, the evil four of Andrew Comrie Picard. Remember, he stopped to pull John Painter out of the ditch. Still recovering from that delay, he is sixth overall on the bottom that was the Group N Subaru of Peter Thompson. Yeah, and this is a state-of-the-art Group N machine with all the latest tricks like launch control. And Comrie Picard's car runs in the open class with a bigger turbo restrictor. The Mitsubishi has more power, but the Subaru has a better suspension system. And on stage seven, these two tied 13 seconds slower than Ericsson and Richard. Comrie Picard is a Canadian. He's a lawyer, but he is based in New York City. And he's done a great job to this point in these sloppy conditions. Still got the flashers going. Now, probably from when he pulled out the painters. And here's Peter Thompson. He's a venture capitalist from uh, Toronto. And uh, Thompson won the Group N class at the recent STPR rally in Pennsylvania against a big field of the top American team. So remember his name, Peter Thompson. He'll be challenging for overall wins pretty soon. Love to see the privateers. And here is a terrific team. Gord and Kathy Olson. They continue to post top tens. Their consistency has them fourth overall and way ahead in group two. And they will be racing in New Richmond, Quebec at the Beta Chaleur later this year. Interesting how they have to sort of pussyfoot their way through some of the corners. And we have two teams from Quebec in the top five. Here's uh, Joël Levesque and Eric Bourbonnet. And they're currently running fifth overall. Now we want to show you a new car making its national rally debut. Jeff Smith driving Miles McEwing's VW, and they're running in production four. Yeah, and Smith is a very experienced driver, but his VW is not really competitive against its uh, all-wheel drive counterparts. And just because it's May doesn't mean that winter is over. No, 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 not here in the Rockies, as these rally drivers found out. Not enough horsepower, not enough wheels driving it, and too much snow. I told you to bring the boots. Bring the boots. He's not the first one to go off there either. The leaderboard through nine stages, and Ericsson continues to lead the current Canadian Championship leader. Welcome back to Alberta and the Rocky Mountain Rally here on TSN. And here are your class leaders. In P4, Joel Levac, Eric Bourbonnet, and the President WRX from Riviera Baudet. In the two-wheel drive classes, Gordon Cathy Olson lead group two in their VW Golf GTI. Andrew and Rebecca Miller, they're from Ontario, and they lead P3. Yavor and Jesse Klostanich are winning production two. While in P1, Martin Wilson and Dennis Wend, their Subaru Justy, they're from Vancouver. It is the last service of the day, four stages to go. The leading teams are hard at work before the final stretch. 
Even the Subaru Canada crew can't keep Pat Richard in the rally. The engine management system has a terminal problem. They'll have a new computer from their supplier, New Zealand, for the next rally. After the first leg of the rally, we were pushing snow. Uh, at the second leg, we were seated just behind Ericsson, and we were able to uh, start making up some time on him. We were prepared to make our attack. and. Uh, at the beginning of the uh, leg, uh, we basically cracked a brake rotor and lost uh, some brake pressure. And then uh, later on in the leg, we had some ECU problems, and it turns out that uh, we overboosted the motor and blew the bottom end right at the spectator corner. So uh, that's it. I mean, it still runs. I made it back to service, but if we run it anymore, it's just like uh, flushing money down the toilet, basically. Uh, the motor's shot. Wow. So with Richard retiring and with a comfortable lead on Peter Thompson, Sylvan Erickson, uh, well, he doesn't have to push quite as hard. No, he's won all but two of the first nine stages, and it's a perfect situation for Sylvain. With Richard scoring no points and Ericsson getting the maximum 20, the championship will be tied. But, you know, rallying being what it is, he can't sit back too much, you'd think. One slip, and the lead will be gone. Fortunately, the Mitsubishi is a reliable car, and Sylvain is comfortable in these conditions. Getting the lead early in the rally with the right amount of aggre aggressiveness and the right choice of Yokohama tires, Sylvain should be able to leave the Western Swing leading the championship. But there you go. That's a mistake. Probably the first one he's made in the rally, but a, a mistake just the same, but it won't cost him that much. No, it shouldn't cost him much at all. But you look at the conditions he's having to deal with. That's fast. I mean, he's really motoring on these very slippery roads on thin tires and through snow, mud, uh, everything imaginable. The only driver to beat him on the stage, John Painter, who is recording great times, Paul, but he sits in ninth place after 10 stages because of that problem he had in the morning. And here's another competitor in his class who's in fifth place overall and first in P4. Joel Levac is showing great car control considering it's only his fourth rally with this car. And he already has the lead in the championship in this class. So the painters have got to pour it on. Gord Olson in the Golf GTI is running an impressive fourth position after 10 stages. Tough, though, with a two-wheel drive car, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. With the mud and snow and the hills they have to deal with in a two-wheel drive car, it's no small feat to be where they are. And uh, let's not forget that they are the defending Group 2 champions, though. Across the cattle grate. And what about the Painter brothers? Well, after falling back to 16, they are really having a great run. Yeah, they clawed their way back to ninth after 10 stages. They actually had the fastest time on stage 10 and recorded top five times in all but one stage. This is the muddy Rocky Mountain Rally on TSN. See the what? Gate, see the what? These are the Porcupine Hills and the final two stages of the Rocky Mountain Rally. And unless disaster strikes, it looks like Sylvan Erickson will record his first win of the 2002 season. Wow, he was almost sideways coming across that cattle gate. He is not holding anything back. And this stage was not used all day because of deep snow, and the organizers finally were able to open it up for the last two stages. The temperatures have been rising all day, and the roads they have been using so far have been getting faster and basically have no snow left on them. Got to get those sunglasses out of the way. Quite different from the other roads as well. There is still quite a bit of snow, a lot of mud. I mean, this is really a mixed bag. It is, and it's, it's a good thing all the leaders uh, have all-wheel drive. But uh, look at this. I mean, it's almost impossible to plow through. And rally drivers can contend with just about anything. Ice, snow, mud, uh, gravel, pavement, doesn't matter. But when it's inconsistent like this, it's difficult to deal with. And, and except for the first stage last night in Calgary, here's Peter Thompson, who's been consistently fast, getting top five times. He doesn't really have a chance to catch up to Erickson, but he has a comfortable lead over third place Andrew Comrie Picard. Now remember, the current championship leader, Patrick Richard, knocked out. And so the championship tightening up. Now, after his crash landing, 
Andrew Comrie Picard started the day in 19th place. He pulled uh, the painters out of the snow, made his way back into third place, lost his brace for two stages, and had to stop because the hood wasn't properly latched at service and it blew open on a stage. All this with a car that had a bent frame last night. And again, some more problems. Yet despite the trouble here, Andrew posted the second fastest time on the stage. Quite an accomplishment when you look at having to dig your way up this hill. Joel Levac has been having a great fight for fourth place with Gord Olsen all day. The Caron Subaru would get the upper hand on the last two stages. It's the two-wheel competitors that really have to slog it. And here they are, the Olsons in their golf. And they deserve an awful lot of credit for staying up with some of the cars more powerful not to mention all-wheel drive. Yeah, they may have finished fourth, but the deep snow near the end would drop them to fifth. And this stretch of road really caused some headaches. Look at this. As the stage progressed, the leaders, well, they didn't have too much of a problem, but a number of competitors, low cars, and especially ones with two-wheel drive, did have all kinds of problems. Yeah, and uh, they may have made a bad tire selection, which didn't help either. We're not able to go uphill in the snow, so the rally was stopped at that point. And look, tow truck even had difficulty getting through. He, he almost got stuck. And uh, he had to be sent in to pull people out so the rally could continue. But finally, after a long delay, the final checkpoint, and Sylvan Erickson wins his first event of the year. Second place, Peter Thompson, Rod Hendrickson in the Subaru WRX. Fantastic. It's my first podium ever. Terrific. It's been a great event. Your time? Yeah, I had a fantastic time. Really challenging and great roads. For the third rally in a row, third place to Andrew Comrie Picard and Dave Schindel. We pushed really, really hard on that stage. We took out a few poles there, uh, so we had a moment. But um, it's exciting. It's going to be close for third. The factory Subaru team shut out of the top five, but the honor maintained by a couple of privateers, Thompson and Levac. Joel Levac not only finished fourth overall, a personal best, he won the production four class. Fifth overall and first in group two, the Olsen. Nobody was even close. And P3 going to Andrew and Rebecca Miller. Father and son, Yavor and Jesse Kostranich in P2. And the production one winners, Martin Wilson and Dennis Wind. So after four rallies, the championship, it is dead even. Erickson Richard, and then Mr. Third Place, Andrew Comrie Picard, 36 points. The Canadian Rally Championship on TSN is brought to you by Subaru, the beauty of all-wheel drive. And by Yokohama Performance Radials. Now you've got control. Nighttime in the Rockies. Yeah, there are mountains back there somewhere. Thanks for joining us on behalf of Paul Chater and our entire crew. The Canadian Rally Championship on TSN, Canada's sports leader.